This is part two in a little mini series on building a soda blast cabinet, and this tool is an absolute must if you're looking to do so. Check it out. Hey friend, smash that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Also, we have hundreds of videos and playlists on here for you. Enjoy the video. Hey friends, Shane from HowToWrench.com and on to another tool improvement video. If you've seen a lot of our videos and playlists on restoration, you know we're a huge fan of vapor blasting and we've done a bunch of videos too on soda blasting. And if you're not really familiar with what soda blasting is yet, it is literally a cabinet modified to use baking soda. I also have just a traditional sandblast cabinet that you'd think of for doing like really rough stuff or you know, stuff you're not really so worried about, especially steel stuff that doesn't deform its shape a lot. So, you know, in our opinion, there's a tool for different uses, right? When I first started deciding to build this dedicated soda blaster, you know, you can pick these up cheap enough at Harbor Freight, but you can pick them up used off Marketplace. I think I got this thing for 60 bucks or something with a bunch of extra parts. And what I did is just took the floor out. I found it to be just a super pain in the butt because the soda is not as easy to work with. I mean, this machine, the Vapor Blaster, stupid easy, put it in, go, just works amazing. But with the soda, you tend that you find you constantly kind of have to keep moving the pickup tube for the soda and, and you keep having to back blow the gun out and it clogs up really easy. It is what it is. So you say, well, geez, well, why even use it at all? Why not just use the Vapor Blaster? And I'll tell you why. With the soda blast, you are able to literally get done with the part, come over here to a sink, wash it off, and you're done. There's no left behind sand or media to worry about. You have to watch our other videos with this whole restoration area, making this table and sink and how my parts washers on there. It's going to be pretty cool. But I don't repeat myself too much in every video. So that is the fantastic thing about soda. My number one thing that I use soda for are carburetors. We get a lot of carburetors shipped here. And if it's not a full restoration vehicle, if they're looking just to get some back into service, I love soda. It does a great job, cleans it pretty amazing. Not to the perfection and beauty is vapor blasting, but I'll tell you what, it's a heck of a lot cheaper. The labor involved in vapor blasting is extensive and we see so many parts in the world getting ruined because people are taking a great tool and a great product but they're not cleaning the media out of it afterwards engine cases all kinds of things you have to know what you're doing so that's my number one caution against jumping in vapor blasting and thinking that you can treat it like soda blaster i mean people are ruining stuff with sand blasters i remember the first time we had a a customer come back to my shop in uh, 1999 and was all you know hellbent that we had ruined his motor and uh, ultimately the piston was sent into Wisco and they were able to prove and show that basically been just blasted to death well it wasn't from us when he cleaned his engine or cases he just you know he didn't get that meat out there and it wore that engine out like just in a few hours so fortunately I got that lesson really young in my career and it always really stuck with me so this soda blaster, like I said, has been fantastic. What I did was I just used a really cheap, you know, I think these were like $20 vacuums. I liked it because it was small. Originally, I liked it because I could take it off the mountain and multi-purpose and use it other places. I got to really make a good fitting here. You can see I got some other stuff that could definitely use some improvement here to, to patch up. There's an intake of air that has to come into this machine. Otherwise, you'd it'll compress. So if you have this blocked or plugged, it'll pull the windshield down, right? So I find this really cool sweet spot where I'm blowing the soda dust all over the place. And then I'm using the vacuum but if you have the vacuum wide open, it's literally just taking everything out of the cabinet. You'll, you'll empty your basin. So we need to control it. Let me explain what happens when you decide to put a vacuum on one of these sandblast cabinets. And it doesn't matter what the media is. It could be soda blast. It could be aluminum oxide. It could be walnut shell. It doesn't matter. But when you put a vacuum on here, obviously, hence the term vacuum, you're going to create a vacuum inside the cabinet and due to the strength of the vacuum, okay, it has to match the restriction that you're going to choose to use. You can see here, I haven't finalized this. I just put some different filter media up here just so that the media inside the cabinet wouldn't come back out. Even though it's under a vacuum, you have such a swirl in there that it will work its way up 
this side. They build this plate around here. This is hollow under here to help it not swirling around here and going back out. But no matter what, it's just going all over the place. You're spraying it with a gun with air pressure and you can overpower that spray and out there. So that should help understand how that would happen on a space that's under vacuum. It's because of the air pressure that you're adding in there. Okay, that being said, I've just experimented with some different thicknesses of filters. I just got duct taped on there. I'm going to go, I've decided I'm going to do something like on my vapor blast cabinet here where I'm going to have a piece of PVC with a tube stock on there. I'm going to go with that same size because that'll be nice because I've got multiples of those. So I'll have some inventory. So here is the problem that happens. The amount of restriction you put on there and the strength of that vacuum if you don't have it balanced, it'll literally try to suck the glass down or it's going to suck all the media literally right out of the cabinet through the vacuum. And that just makes a pain for cleaning. And as you'll see here in a second, it actually makes it harder to see because the swirl is so crazy in there because the vacuum's too strong. And you want a way to balance this out. And that's why this Variac from Vivor is just going to be amazing because you can fine tune it on a dial so easily. So hopefully that makes sense on what we're trying to do here. Creating this balanced system is accomplishing two things here. We're going to create a balanced pressure versus vacuum in there for the two things we're working with. The pressure we're supplying and the vacuum created by the vacuum, okay? But we don't want to suck the glass down. We don't want to overpower a gasket where we would, you know, pull past that. We're just trying to have a well-balanced cabinet. And in the process of doing all that, the second benefit is that we're just going to make it much more viewable and enjoyable to restore your parts because you can see what you're doing and not having to stop, open the door, look at it. Oh, I missed a spot and do all that back and forth. So that's the two goals of this. So now that you've seen how the intake and how this, you know, really this is an exhaust when you don't have anything on here, this is what's letting the cabinet breathe, but we're really going to balance this. And I'll tell you what, wait till you see this, this thing's cool. This is going to solve all the problems and make it super reliable and make it really tunable so that I can also take that and go to different size cabinets. My regular sandblast cabinet is a much larger cabinet so i will be able to tune it very quick and only have to have one of those one thing i can't brag enough up for the company vht on vapor blasting on the fact that when you work in a wet system like that and you have this wiper here gosh dang you can just see amazing so that was probably the number one use feature originally besides the output of the machine that i loved about vapor blasters as you can actually see these get to be difficult right without some type of modification like this i want to show you this unit here you could see all the voltages that you could take and control and you got to remember this is ac to ac so you're putting 120 in and you have the possibility to have 130 out to supply this you can see here it's fused at 20 amps the cord is a 120 plug-in i mean that's just standard u.s electrical supplies this guy look at this look at all the venting on this it's even got an overload reset on it I already talked about the fuse, but just think about the fact that it does have a fuse that you can swap out and change. I'm feeling really hopeful for this just because of how wildly heavy duty it is. From what I learned on the internet, there's a lot of testing and diagnostic stuff that people use this for. I couldn't find anybody that was doing what I was doing, so I thought this is a really worthy video since no one's seemed to have thought of this as a use case. Let's watch what we can do, and you can just listen to the output of the vacuum. So right now we should be on full blast. So what I could do I can dial that down and you can hear the difference. Pretty cool. I'll do some long-term testing. I'm feeling extremely confident. That's what I'm gonna do. So here's what I'm gonna do next, just so that you can see it in action. I'm gonna go ahead and get this rehooked up, get some air in here. We'll get the soda baking dust flying around here and I'll show you how nice it is to have a vacuum and then also how we can dial this in to get a nice viewing window. So let me reset and get this hooked up. All right, let's watch it in action. All right, we're gonna do some real world examples right now. So I'm gonna take this carburetor bowl as it just came to me and you could see there's some 
old fuel that's stained in there from just the evaporation and the left behind deposits typical of the fuel, right? So we're gonna take a look and see what this will look like before and after. We're gonna do a couple different tests. We're gonna do just putting it in there if you had no vacuum and getting a shot of what the window would look like. Then we're gonna do a vacuum on full, right? Just no with no variac. And then we're gonna do a dialed in view of what that window is gonna look like. Let's get started. All right, one thing I wanna to say too is this non-LED light, this is just a fluorescent light that came in this. I haven't modified that yet, but that'd be another improvement I would like to make. All right, let's see what it looks like with just the air pressure. Start to see once you get good and in the soda mix there by getting that tube that I was talking about. This is the tube that we put down in the mix. The great thing about soda, I don't have to cover anything up, I don't have to worry about any holes, nothing. Okay, so there is no vacuum. Okay, and you know, with this amazing camera technology, sometimes it can obviously focus in and seem better than it really is. This is a second shot of this video. When I shot the first one, I thought, man, that didn't even look so bad. But now that I'm back in here using it, I'm noticing it's getting pretty cloudy in here, and it definitely gets to a point where there'll be enough in here where the gun will just actually fade out all the way to where I can't see anything. So, not horrible, but let's see if we can just make it better. So let's turn the fan on. And you can see the gloves sucking up. And try and watch the glass. Yeah, the amount of air restriction I have on the back to the full pressure of this fan is dialed. We're not getting a lot of movement. If I covered that up more, restricted it more, we'd have a problem. But actually right now, thinking about before having this adjustability, the amount of restriction I put back there is pretty sweet. Okay. So here, and what you'll see starting to get pretty cloudy on me. I'm going to dial it down. We're about halfway there. And I can actually see a lot of that mixture in here just running right out the vacuum. Okay, I want to try and reduce that. You'll notice here how the gloves aren't as stiff. Let me turn that fully back up. You actually can see those lifting a little bit. When I take this down, It'll go to the point where they collapse all together. I want to try about halfway right there. I think that's about 60 volts. Well, it's really nice and clear in here now. Okay. I can see it's not running straight out, which means I'm going to keep more in the blaster. Dang, I can literally just clearly see the carburetor bowl. Get my mix up here a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm just using this to scoop the 
baking soda into the, the V of the basin. And you see it starts coming out good again. This is beautiful. This makes this so much more enjoyable to use this machine. Now the other thing is, if you're blasting right here by the window and you're hitting this, it's gonna ricochet right back into your view. So one thing you wanna try and do is see if you can go to an angle and get it to where it's ricocheting off a different direction. Maybe not directly into the fan, but being left-handed creates a problem. Let's try right-handed. If I go here, it should ricochet to the door. And then you can always pause for a second, let it clear up a little, look at your part. So I think we're getting close here. I'm going to go back to left-handed, it's just easier for me. Now the other thing I could do, since I know that the, the Variac is controlling the fan, I could start to use this as a power off. Instead of leaving the fan, I could just leave it on. That's another option to that. And then what I'll most likely do is put an indicator here and an indicator here. And then I may make a little mark or label here that this is for the soda blaster, right? Because it's a smaller cabinet. And then let's say that my regular sandblaster with the walnut shell, maybe it likes to be over here. I could label that and have it ready to go in quick references to set up for that larger cabinet. But let's go ahead and open this up and let's take a look at how it did. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead on all fair comparison and turn the lights back on. Oh yeah, I can tell right here with the lights off how much different that is. Yeah, look at that. Let's take a look at some still shots. Well, here's a good shot of the outside, the bottom of the bowl before. And you can see there's still a little bit of work to do up here on the accelerator pump cover, but this is just a few seconds of blasting away. Let's take a look at the bowl side. Well, look at that. I promised you. So the blasting is pretty cool. And this is just rinsing off with water just like this. Watch how I clean this so fast. All right, if you recall, what I said was so absolutely awesome about this is the fact that I could come in here and literally just rinse this off and I can put this right back into service. There are gonna be no issues because it's not leaving a media behind. Now, when I really go to do this, this accelerator pump cover is gonna come off it's gonna be a more thorough job. This is just for the purpose of this video to show you, does the soda media even work? But let's look at this again in the light. Okay, you can see up in this corner where I got a little bit more work to do. We start to look at that, that's looking pretty impressive. And look at the, the brass itself. Let's try to zoom in on that. Pretty stinking. Impressive. And when I was looking through that window, I kept seeing like a black spot right there. That looks like some old sealant that somebody did from a bowl gasket. So sometimes, definitely with soda, I'm going to want to scrape that off with a razor blade to get that back to the metal and then I could polish it up. You could see here, 
a little accelerator pump hole. I'm gonna be able to blow through that with full confidence that there's no media in there causing me a bunch of grief. But man, look at that. How cool is that? Yeah, you can definitely see I didn't focus on this area really at all while I was in there. I was catching the outside of this. And that actually makes a great point to where you could see soda and not soda or, you know, before and after, just looking at those color differences. Once again, I can't stress enough how much I like soda for applications of real world parts. I do a lot of engine, carburetors, you know, stuff that I don't want to spend two hours of cleaning an aluminum oxide or a media out that I got to be concerned about an actual grit or something that's going to give problems, right? With this soda, you could literally do this right on a bearing and wash it out. You could do it on anything and then recoat it right away so it wouldn't rust, but that is pretty stinking cool. Well, my friends, I hope I showed you in this video not only how to customize or dial in your cabinet so that you can get the best viewing experience, and actually reduce your time in there. If you could see better, you're going to spend less time in the cabinet and less time opening, closing to look at your parts. And then, you know, like I said, how we achieved that was with this Vivo Variac tool. Fantastic. It's really going to solve some issues for us for flexibility as well. But then secondly, we hope that we encourage you to create one of these cabinets for yourself. These are super rad. We're really happy we took the time to do it. If you haven't done so yet, if you could consider joining the channel, that helps us out, really encourages us to make more great content like this. If you have products in your company and you'd like us to test out your products because you think our customers and our audience would like those, please contact us on the website. And for all the fans out there, if you haven't done so yet, please make sure and like, share, and subscribe. Make it a great day, and as always, keep wrenching.